It's gone two o'clock, so if I can welcome you all to today's uh, Transport Committee. Uh, obviously, there are the usual bits of housekeeping that I will go through accordingly. If uh, anyone's got a mobile phone that isn't yet turned to its silent mode, can we make sure that we do that accordingly? Uh, we do have a much more robust and improved microphone system these days, uh, but again, if I can ask that people uh, suitably talk into the microphones at a suitable distance to make sure everyone can hear everything that's being said, uh, that would be appreciated. Uh, we aren't expecting any uh, fire alarm, so if anything does happen today, we need to treat it as live and follow the very polite instructions from the lady uh, who is on the PA that would tell us that. But if we do need to, our assembly point is just outside the Museum of Liverpool. Um, final uh, announcement, obviously, is around filming and photography, which we do strongly encourage the transparent and open uh, local part of the local um, government uh, scenery uh, but if people do have their own equipment could we please ask that they speak to our offices to make sure that it doesn't interfere with the equipment that we've got webcasting us live at this moment in time. Okay first item is apologies for absence. Have we had any of those Charles? Yes we've got apologies from councillors Alan Jones, Paul Hayes and Anthony Laval. Excellent, thanks. And I was going to, I've been informed that councillors Hayes and Jones are not well, so if we can send their best regards. I did think it might be that Boris Johnson uh, is on the Wirral as we speak, and they might be winding and dining him, but the idea of having lunch with the Prime Minister also knocks me sick as well. So yeah. I think that perhaps gives them a reason accordingly. Uh, but no, seriously, if we send our very best regards to them. Um, John? Uh, just uh, Council Paul Pritchard, please. Excellent. Excuse you. Yeah. Okay then, uh, uh, Linda. Linda, oh, Linda. Linda Mooney, yes, thanks Ken, that's great. Okay. Item two is declarations of interest and that just is for me to remind everyone here present that if they do have any uh, declarations that they need to make, please make sure you either do those now or if they become apparent at any point during today's proceedings. Third item is the minutes of the last meeting, and can I move that those uh, minutes of the 12th of September be approved as a correct record, if that's agreed? Agreed. Super. I shall uh, put my autograph on those as is procedure accordingly. Okay, if we then move on to uh, the first substantive item of the afternoon, uh, obviously we always like to uh, invite some of the region's transport operators to come and present to us. And I'm very pleased to say that um, Lucia's with us from Transpennine Express. Uh, she's the Regional Development Manager and she's going to be coming to the front, giving us a presentation, then of course there'll be an opportunity for us to ask questions. So Lucia, over to you. Thank you. Kent, um, one of the two regional development managers that work for Transpennine Express. Um, I'd like to thank you to, uh, for inviting me to present today. Um, I'm pretty sure most of you know who Transpennine are, but for those that don't, um, I'll provide a brief overview of uh, who we are, what we've been doing since the start of the franchise um, in 2016, an update on the new trains that are coming in, and, and what, what we've got coming next. So who are we? Um, that. Um, this is our network that connects the great towns and cities from across the north and into Scotland. Um, we have over 1,200 colleagues that work for us, uh, many of them that live and work in the city region, and we've been recruiting at a phenomenal rate for new drivers and conductors to help support the introduction of the new trains that are coming. We provide 330 services a day um, across the north and in Scotland, and move more than 32 million customers every year. So we started the franchise in April 2016 and the first thing we did was to change our vision and that was, and it's been across everything that we do, is about taking the North further. It's the centre of everything that we believe in in Transpennine um, and it's at the forefront of everything that, that we do. So our strategy was to reimagine and transform the offer that we make to our customers by providing improved services, better trains, making it easier for commuters, 
making it easy for our customers to move between the towns and cities of the north. So we've been listening to our customers, we've been listening to our colleagues and we've worked really hard to enhance the customer experience on board our services um, and at our stations. We've improved our catering offer, um, the coffee Leo always talks about in his presentations has uh, improved substantially, it's a big coffee, coffee friend. Um, and we're looking forward to making some further improvements next year once we've introduced the new, the new fleet. So all of our trains have got free Wi-Fi, whether you're in first class or standard class, um, and we've introduced Extreme, which is our onboard entertainment system. It provides films, box sets, TV programmes, magazines, um, and you can download that onto it through the app, and it, and it is free. Um, we've also introduced closed captions, which helps viewers with hearing difficulties or those that prefer a text description on the portal. Um, and we're currently providing the largest amount of closed caption content of any provider, transport provider in the UK. Sales of e-tickets um, have increased by over 100% since the start of the well, since over the last 18 months. So we've reviewed the digital strategy that we've got in place and introduced more ticket gates to support e-tickets. Um, barcode ticketing, we've increased the number of ticket vending machines at stations and we've been working with Northern and with Transport for the North and introduced smart tickets. Um, these are for season ticket holders and currently 60% of all our season tickets are now on smart cards and we're expecting that to grow um, as we've now enabled it for, for customers to be able to download them through, through, the, uh, through the app on Wi-Fi. Um, so they don't have to physically go to a ticket office now to, to update these, these smart cards. Uh, back in 2018, we spent £32 million completely refurbishing all of our Class 185 trains. The idea being that they needed to look exactly the same as what the new train is going to look like. So they're exactly the same, so whether you're going on a, a brand new train that's coming in later this year, or you're on a 185, most people won't know the difference, you'll be able to get the same experience. Um, and as I mentioned before, they've, got, they've all got free Wi-Fi. So we've also been making investments elsewhere. Um, we're part way through an £18 million investment in our 19 stations, providing new passenger facilities, new ticket machines. Um, but as well as this, we've been making improvements at the stations we call out, with additional seating, etc. Um, for instance, at Manchester Victoria and at Leeds. And Piccadilly, um, recognising that a lot of our customers are moving through these big stations, we've, we've been working uh, with the station manager to make sure that it's comfortable for everybody. Uh, we've also introduced some new customer information screens across the stations, um, which are a lot clearer, provide much more clear information. We're also in the process of rolling out interactive and mobile screens across our stations. Um, this enables the teams to provide new and improved ways of communicating with our customers. Um, they can provide up-to-date disruption information, the disruption map, which means that you can then look at the timetable, you can, there's an interactive journey plan, so if there's disruption on one part of the network, it will flag it up and it will then show you the best way of getting to your destination. Um, and it also allows our, customer, our station teams to have the opportunity to speak directly with their customers. So when you, when you go to London, you see these messages on the underground, little poems and things like that. So our station teams will be able to do that for their customers, whether you're having a sunny day out in Scarborough or off to see Felix at Carrying Huddersfield. But the most significant investment we're making is in our new train fleet. Uh, Liverpool will get all three of the new train fleets. And this will provide an enhanced onboard experience and what more importantly it provides significant increase in capacity. So this is the Nova fleet. Nova three, sorry, I'll, yeah, I'll go ahead. Nova three. So we've already introduced Nova three back in August and um, provided we did a soft launch on it with the August bank holiday. Um, we're running 12 services a day between Liverpool and Scarborough with two of the new trains. Nova 2 will be on the Anglo-Scottish trains, so the Liverpool Glasgow's will eventually be on Nova 2's, but these will be the electric trains that will be running up and down on the West Coast Main Line, and they'll be introduced before December on the Manchester Airport to Scotland services. And Nova 1 will be on the Liverpool to Newcastle trains, um, 
These were, we had a soft launch with days um, back in September, end of September, we ran from Liverpool to Newcastle on Saturday, and we'll be looking to introduce you know, one into passenger service later on in this month. So, what's next? <laughs> As if that wasn't enough. <laughs> So from December, timetable change, we'll be introducing the direct Liverpool to Glasgow service, um, extending the Liverpool to Newcastle service to Edinburgh, which we'll also call at Morpeth. Our marketing teams have been working with multi-channel media outlets, including press, radio, outdoor sites, bus advertising, to start promoting these services from the 18th of November, which is when our new TV advert will launch as well, so you'll start to see more information out there and it'll be promoting the new price, the, the fare that's going to be on offer. Um, so you'll start seeing more information about Liverpool, Glasgow. And on the day of the launch, uh, there'll be events taking place at both Liverpool and in Glasgow. Um, I think my last understanding is that we'll be having like the Beatles in Glasgow and then a Scottish band in Liverpool on the platforms promoting it. But we're also keen to work with you on more schemes. So whilst we recognise we don't have any managed stations within the Liverpool City region, we do use Liverpool Lime Street, we use Lee Green, we use the Newton Willows. Um, so we're quite keen to work together to see what else we can provide. Um, society facilities, for instance, the car park at Lee Green, we know is, is very well subscribed. Um, so if there are any other schemes that you know, you'd like to work with us on, then please just, just let me know and um, be really good to see how we can move things forward. Um, there's a picture there of the, one of the cycle facilities that we've just recently installed. So that's it from me. I um, hope this gives you a bit of a feel for what we've been doing, what we've got coming up um, and, and what's to come. So, thank you. Super, thanks for that. I'm sure we'll have lots of different questions. So, if I can see a show of hands, Cody. Okay, I'll just take these down before I forget. Uh, we've got Ken, we've got Harry, we've got John, we've got Natalie, we've got uh, Jerry, John, Gordon. God, that was a, a sly bit there, I couldn't spot that. Uh, Jed uh, and Pat. Lovely. So, Ken, take it away. Thanks very much, Joe. Thanks very much for the interesting presentation, Luke, Joe. You did say you wanted to take us further north. Don't forget, there's a tipping point. After that, you get out to go south, and we want to keep that stuff in, up in the north. So don't go too far away. Put your aspirations, please. Uh, we're aware that uh, the delays with the provision of new rolling stock on both north and transport for the north franchises. Can you advise on the uh, your comments position and what plans are in place to mitigate any delays, please? Yeah, so we've currently accepted about 45% of the fleet. Um, I've just got my notes here. Um, yes, yeah, so we've, we've got 20, 20 new trains that we've now accepted. Um, four Nova 4s, I believe we've got about 10 Nova 1s and five Nova 2s. My maths is right, probably wrong. Um, so there have been some delays, you are, you are correct, um, but what we've done is we've, we've delayed introducing new services to make sure that we've got the rolling stock in place for the right time. So by December we will have enough trains to be able to, we'll be running all three fleets of trains by the December timetable. Harry. Thank you. One of the things that both bus companies and rail companies pride themselves on is customer service. And yet most of your customers would say that they are infuriated by the fact that your services don't match up. The bus company, the bus is running at a different time to the train. And we've had problems in the past in trying to get the bus and rail operators to, to integrate their, uh, their services. As far as we're aware, in Cornwall, first group are actually operating a, a system where through timetable the buses to link to uh, to trains and the last bus guarantee. Are you working with any of the bus companies uh, uh, and other uh, transport companies uh, in the local city region and across the north to introduce uh, a similar uh, reality here? 
we're concerned, for example, that whilst your uh, trains customer information screens show the details of local taxi firms, they fail to show any information for onward journeys by bus. So I come back to where I started from. It's a little bit difficult to accept that customer service is number one priority when I'm sure you're well aware that your customers are incredibly frustrated with the fact no matter how good the service they receive on the train, it doesn't integrate with the, with the bus and vice versa, the bus passenger <coughs> will say that exactly the same on the part of the customer with the train. Um, I would agree that customer service is paramount for us, um, but I would also agree that the, the integration between the rail and, and the bus operators has been somewhat challenging. Um, we would be more than happy to work with the bus companies in the Liverpool city region to see how we can integrate the two better. Um, it's always that balance of does the bus wait, if the train's delayed, does the bus wait or does the bus stick to its timetable knowing it's got to go and catch you know, go to other points on, on its route. So um, it, it is a continuing challenge for us but as I said we would be more than happy to speak to any of the bus operators within the city region so perhaps if we can get some more details um, we'll be, I'll be happy to take that one forward. Okay, John. Thanks, Chair. Thanks very much. Thanks for your presentation, Lucia. Uh, affordability for young people is one of our key priorities, and we've had significant success on the bus network with this. Uh, we know you're introducing new deals for young people. Could you tell us more about these? how they've been taken up, and how you're encouraging the rest of the rail industry to actually introduce similar initiatives, please. Thank you very much. So we recently worked on a scheme uh, with, with Mersey Travel for, for apprentices to uh, provide discounts tickets. We have discounts for 16 to 18 year olds. Um, there's the under 25, so there are various ways of being able to access um, transport. The other thing we were also introduced as a pilot scheme was to for job seekers where we would pay for job seekers to go for interviews and if they were successful we would pay for their first month season ticket which means that they would still be able to get to their to their job. It was initially piloted in Hull. Um, I'll need to get more information in terms of where we are with it as an ongoing scheme but it's something that we, we'd be keen to, if it's something that would be of interest to the city region, we, we could talk to, to you to see if we could progress that on this side as well. Thank you Chair and thanks for that presentation. L last autumn it was a nightmare, um, particularly poor on the rail network in the north with performance. Um, it was Plan, what plans do you have and other industry partners such as Network Rail to ensure that this doesn't repeat again in terms of the poor performance and the timetable problems? So back in December last year we, we introduced a new timetable um, which put in a lot more contingency into the network. Um, last, everybody knows last May's um, pain that we, we had providing a service for, for customers on rail. So, um, December did make the service improve substantially, but also the autumn um, network rail had already started out going out, treating the tracks with the railhead treatment trains to make sure that when the leaves come down it doesn't impact on, on the rail services. Um, ourselves, and we, we haven't introduced a timetable, an autumn timetable this year, because what we did is in December we, we put a lot more contingency into the services so if they are running late there's a lot more turnaround time now. Um, so we don't envisage to, there to be the same issues that we had last autumn. Okay. Jerry. Thank you, Ian. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, my question. Uh, Northern have failed to introduce a new fast service between Liverpool and Bradford provided heightened with an express service to Manchester. We are obviously disappointed that Norton have not fulfilled this franchise obligation. Would you be prepared to step into the breach and work with us on how some of your services could stop us heightening and give this key part of our region some express trains it needs? Thank you. So 
suppose as part of this franchise, we, we already have our train service requirements that are set out, um, but it's certainly something I can speak to our train planners about if there's any scope within the services that we run. Um, at the moment, I, I can't say yes or no, but I can certainly take the question away and ask it for you. Thank you. John. What travel safe initiatives are currently ongoing within Passenger Transport Executive for 2019 and 20 and beyond? That's a very good question, I'm afraid I, I, I don't have the answer to that. I'll have to take that one away and come back. Thank you. Go on. Thanks very much. Uh, sorry to be a bit negative after such a good, positive presentation. Uh, you may have answered the question in part in relation to the uh, awesome timetable, uh, but obviously there's concerns, and you mentioned the last May's timetable fiasco. Is what we have in place that would give us confidence you can achieve a performance uh, percentage, say 90% or more? Bearing in mind that all the problems have been your cause, but we've never went there. Uh, and also, is you gave reference to the linkage to Scotland, uh, Newcastle through to. Uh, Edinburgh, the link up from Liverpool, uh, Edinburgh, is um, there's been a few different dates we've had along the way here. So, is is the date of December written in stone now for us? And I can go and bank everything on that happening, you see. When I left the office, yes. <laughs> <laughs> December the 15th is timetable day. <laughs> um, so yes, but with regards to um, performance, the industry wouldn't allow itself to be in the same situation as it was last year. Um, there was a lot more due diligence takes place when we are putting in timetables. We've had services that have been that we've not been able to run because Network Rail didn't feel that there was enough robustness within the plan. So the, the, there is a lot more focus on making sure that the services that are introduced at timetable change can be delivered, providing performance for customers that people expect on time to where they need to get to. I think that answers. Jeff. Thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, I mean, first of all, can I say okay. the trades do look impressive, I've got to say that. Uh, but my real question is about, um, about staffing, really. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about the plans for the franchise for staffing, particularly locally, uh, for both on train and on the stations, and also your kind of policy on apprentices? And we, we look now at benchmarking for apprentices, whereby you know we've got some one in twelve in organisations for apprentices. Just wondering if you could shed any light on that for us. So we've recently taken on, I think it's a hundred drivers. Um, over the last few months, um, many of them based in Liverpool. Um, I don't have the number of conductors, but again, because we're introducing all these new trains, um, we need drivers, we need conductors, we need onboard hosts for them. We have the train crew depot at Liverpool, conductors are based there, the onboard hosts are based there. So we see the, the area supporting our staff, and, and I have to say that when I do travel, I'm fortunate to live in the area, in the region, when I'm travelling home and I'm speaking to, to colleagues, um, it's always the, the guys that are based in the Liverpool depots that get the most compliments. Um, with regards to apprentices, we've recently taken on a new batch of 12, and we do this not every year, but every, and if we don't do it every year, we do it every two years, but this, as far as I've been with the business three years now, um, and this is our second batch of, of apprentices that, that we bring in. We work across different departments, so we're very keen to support apprentices. Um. Pat. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, you showed a little slide towards the end there of uh, the bike shelter. I don't know if you could quickly go back to it. But um, no bikes in it yet. No. <laughs> no. Uh, I've got a nice little fob on my hearing. Um, I use that to open all the bike shelters on the Mersey Rail network. I use it regularly. It opens all of them. 
I can leave my bike in there and it's locked up and it's secure so I know when I come back at the end of the day, at the end of my journey, my bike is still going to be there. Uh, that to me is not fit for purpose in 2019 because I can't take my bike and lock it up uh, securely. Okay, so I'd, I'd like to know what you might, would you, would you think about copying what we've done in Mersey Rail? Uh, uh, for your network, and secondly, in terms of the new trains, what provision is there for people who want to take a bike on the train? Thanks. So, my, my colleague Charlie works, does the uh, disciples schemes, um, certainly something we can look into. Um, he's got a supplier that he's, he's used across our station, but if, if there's a better way of doing it, then yes, we'd be pleased to, to hear from you. Yeah, okay. Um, so, if you can send the details over, then I, I can certainly pass that on. Um, with regards to the new trains, there's space for four, four bikes on each train. Um, and last year we introduced um, a reservation system. When it first started, it was 24 hours, but now you can contact our company. And if you want to get on the, your train with a bike, you 10 minutes to, to reserve the bike. Um, so it's a lot quicker. It's through WhatsApp. Um, somebody will come back to you straight away and give you the reservation information that you need. I was going to ask Lucia a bit about smart ticketing because that's something we've always been very passionate about and we've achieved some quite good things in this city region. Um, I'm right in saying that TP are part of Smart in the North, that Transport for the North are doing that. First of all, can you tell me how, how is it progressing, particularly on your network? Where are things up to and where is it going to go next? So, yeah, we, we introduced Smart. Um, it's been a as far as I'm, I'm aware, it, it's gone down very well. In fact, we can, you can now um, buy your ticket online. Um, has, it's been a big, big improvement. That's only a recent addition that we've been able to do. Um, but 60% uh, of our season ticket holders now have a smart card. Um, but we also recognise that it's not just about season ticket holders. We want to make it easier for everybody to be able to tap in and out and, and get the best available fare. Um, so we have a team in place that are working on that with Transport for the North and Northern and my understanding is later next year there will be some progress being made. Okay, well that, that's really sort of positive to, to hear and that's sort of, you said 60% of the season ticket holders, which is great. You might not be able to kind of ask, answer this bit, but I'm going to ask it anyway. With you making such positive progress as the rail division, why on earth is first bus division refusing? to take up smart in the north through transport for the north. For me, it just seems the left hand's doing something great, the right hand wants to keep it firmly in the pocket and not interact. I think madness, frankly. You got any response? Okay. <laughs> well, if you could take that back, because uh, yeah. we found that, at best strange, at worst, pretty unforgiving, to be honest with you. Um, the bit I'd just sort of finish up with as well, if there's no further questions, is thanks ever so much for your presentation. There's some really positive stuff there. And I'm particularly looking forward to the point next year when all of the new trains are delivered and in service. I think we'll give the North of England that genuine intercity service we've never had for, uh, for, for decades. Obviously, there's a lot of things that still have to be done. So we fully appreciate the fact that performance is not, so as Gordon says, where it should be, and there needs to be a lot more that everyone across the industry needs to be tightening up on. Equally, thanks for your assurances about the autumn. The one bit we would say is if there are any concerns that you have got, now is the time to shout, because we don't want an autumn like we had last year, particularly with the fact that punctuality and reliability is not at the level it should be uh, already. And equally, if there are any further hiccups with the new trains that might sort of impact on some of our new services, Again, we need to know about that as soon as possible because we are very much looking forward to Christmas in Scotland if that's what the travelling public would want to do. But thanks ever so much for, for coming along and uh, it would be great to have you back at a future occasion. So can thank Lucia in the, the normal way. Okay, from trains on to buses because item 5 is the quarterly bus report and Laura, that's over to you. Thank you and good afternoon, Chair and members of the Transport Committee. I'm here this afternoon to present the bus report for quarter, second quarter 2019-20. So the report begins with a summary of patronage figures for the whole of 1819, which shows that the city region continues to block the trend in bus patronage with a 9% year-on-year growth, and for the first time, adult patronage increases and now driving overall growth. Before then, it was more to young people's, but adults the first time. 
with over 150 million bus journeys now being made in the city region. We do now have the uh, figures for quarter one, so they've been received, but they've just been verified, so they'll be in the next quarter report. Um, moving on, the report highlights um, the, the, the continued delivery of interventions in, through the Bus Alliance. Um, you've, members have got a list of these in front of them, so I'll just highlight a couple. First of all, under the Green Reach programme, um, appointments, the consultants have been appointed and commencement of the delivery and development of options to improve bus punctuality and the bus offer down five key corridors across the city region has begun. Um, we are due to be looking at the development of an outline business case to be completed for April 2020, so that's the deadline that we're working for with this package of interventions. Um, some really good news is that 100% of all buses in the Liverpool city region are now able to take contactless payments with the installation of some new ticket machines. The uptake of this has been really positive to date. Um, in the first week of the supported services, we had um, the total of all transactions being contactless was at 8.2%, which is really good for that first week. And at the end of September, which is kind of two months really since it was introduced, we're looking at 11.10% of all transactions being contactless on supporter services, 22% on Arriva services, and 24.9% on stagecoach services. So already it's seen as a viable way of paying for tickets and journeys across the, the bus network. Um, the Customer Growth and Development Workstream's latest campaign I just wanted to highlight is due to start this month, which is called We Cannot Wait to Tackle Climate Change, and is really very much sort of supporting the Year of the Environment here in the CA in the Liverpool city region, but also um, mirrors public concern on the state of our environment and what we can do to, to improve that. Um, so look out for lots of polar bears on the size of buses and things that we go around the city region soon. And the second phase of consultation for the Sefton Network Review has commenced in early June and with the changes implemented in September. Um, key changes are highlighted in the report um, but we've had, although there were some initial concerns, they've had no, we've had no complaints from bus users following the implemented changes. I was going to take this, this um, stage to highlight that future reports we're going to highlight in them the feedback that we've received from customers, complaints and compliments, and how we've dealt with those, and I thought that'd be a useful addition for members. And finally, in this section for the Bus Alliance, an additional piece of information is that Comfy Bus Limited have applied and have been accepted as the third member to join the Liverpool City Region Bus Alliance. Um, we're in the process of still signing all the relative um, legal agreements, um, but Comfy Bus are already participating in the business planning process to develop next year's plan, and we're all really pleased to have them on board. So it's really good piece of news. Um, moving forward, and um, the City Region CA is continuing to explore the opportunities afforded to it under the Bus Services Act to deliver bus services across the City Region. Um, members will be aware that three options are being assessed, these being franchising, enhanced partnerships and the continuation of the existing bus alliance, with the intention for a preferred option to be identified by April 2020. Um, just to highlight that a bus reform project update was considered by the Metro Mayor and members of the Command Authority, in, on the 26th of July, and that report also gained approval for the principles of the vision for bus, which were a set of objectives that were detailed further in the report. Um, these set of objectives are intended to tackle the issues identified by customers um, through the big bus debate um, and further support the aims of the bus strategy, build on the achievements of the bus alliance, and capture new innovations in technology. And the focus in quarter two has very much been options assessment and strategy development, particularly in relation to network, fleet and ticketing, with the alternative delivery models of franchising enhanced partnerships will be assessed against these um, strategy interventions. Um, a series of meetings to discuss enhanced partnerships have already begun to take place, with another couple happening over the next two weeks, and that's all operators involved in those. And then finally, sort of other work that the um, bus team has been involved in. We've seen with the, um, the new ticket machines, which have allowed contactless payment to happen, we've had a, a massive increase in um, RTI system accuracy, so another benefit of that intervention. We've had the trial of a, a year-long demand responsive travel um, introduced in the speak area in September 2019. And 
we've also seen that the bus team are working on a number of strategies to look at zero emissions across the whole bus fleet as well. There are a number of travel safe initiatives detailed in the report and an overview of customer information involvement in various consultations and the introduction of open data as well. And then finally I was just going to highlight that the um, Liverpool City Region CA has been shortlisted for the City Region of the Year and the Bus Alliance has been shortlisted for three awards, these being Improvements to Bus Services, Transport Team or Partnership of the Year and Information and Marketing Initiative of the Year with the winners to be announced at the National Transport Awards on the 31st of October. Thanks, Laura. We've got any questions or comments on those last I'll start with Chris and then Francis and then Ken. And John. Thanks, Jack. Uh, just looking at uh, page 18 um, and the bus strategy. Um, it's great news that on, you know, in the city region uh, we've got that in increased patronage. Um, but obviously, from the briefing we received earlier, um, that's uh, Kind of contrary to the background of general reductions in usage. Uh, the plans uh, highlighted with the 24-hour operation, etc., um, seem very ambitious, and that's great. Um, it's just whether we think that, um, whether this is kind of a field of dreams situation, a build it and they will come, or whether, it's the, whether we believe there's already a demand there that we're not effectively having to create to be able to land the extra business to bring the revenue in for the extra cost of the 25% extra buses. So that's question one. Second one's uh, 3.6 on page 21. Um, and that's about the older tyre bank. Um, is that something that we... Um, obviously, the, the 3.6 is talking about the legislative uh, process. Is that not something that we uh, sort of um, do locally anyway? Require that that uh, our own buses um, don't have tyres over uh, ten years out, years old anyway? Thank you. So just in relation to the, the vision, we've, I suppose this, just to highlight that this was built on the, the information that's coming out of public consultation, so a sort of desire to see these things happen. We have already started in our business planning to assess with the Bus Alliance how possible it is to, to meet these visions, and already we've had some quite positive discussions that we can move forward on those, so just sort of working our way through them to see how much we can deliver. I think with regards to Taiwan, yes, I believe this is the case. Um, yeah, yeah. Change, do you want to yeah, can I just, uh, obviously there was a, a policy that we brought in in the first time that recognised this. At that time it was a policy to the sub-region. We've now expanded that where it's been picked up nationally. So in that effect we've had those processing procedures in place for a period of time. Part of the work that we do on checking the um, our responsibilities are for support services because we're the employer on those support services contract is that we've had a period of uh, audits put out independently to go and validate the condition of the vehicle and the fact that they comply with our requirements in the specification. And that's it. It was a three year cycle and we've just recently reviewed it for another three years uh, across all the operators. Yeah, I think I can keep on because it's a good example of how the city is genuinely leading on this. Is something particular that Steve Rodham was Metro Mayor was personally very committed to because the tyre campaign tragically is because of a, a local young lad who lost his life because of a, an old tyre on a coach going to a music festival so I think it's a very good sort of example of how the city leads has been in the lead on something that should become sort of national <coughs> law we believe. Okay. Uh, Francis. Uh, page AC uh, page 24 hours service is there any particular routes? Uh, 3.3. So I know it's around the speak area. So it's it's to replace of what was route two one one. So it's that route there. 
I think it's a different question in fairness, Lord. I think um, Francis is talking about on core bus corridors as part of the vision, we'd have a 24 hour service. I think you're wondering which services that might be. So perhaps the 10, the 82, the 1 and the 2, something like that. You tell us. So I think that vision is really to apply across all services. That's what the vision is there to do. So Shane, did you want to add? Yeah, just to, to come in here, what, what you've got there that went through the, uh, the authority in July was from the mayoral bus debate, what did we expect to see as vision? The work on what that means and what it's inserted in service, that's work that will need to be worked through, but that's an ambition that's in the, the vision. So it hasn't got down to specific areas yet, it's too early in that process. Because if you think about it, you've got to establish the vision, then you've got to look at the model, does the bus alliance meet that vision? Would enhanced partnership meet that vision, or would some sort of alternative bus model contract meet, meet, meet only meet that vision? That's the bit they're working through as part of the outline business case that's due and completed in April next year. Just one more question. I did mention it at the other meeting about buses going out of service, and uh, Matt was saying about the decline in passengers. Well, that's one of the reasons because they're trying to make up time. Because if the short of time they've got to go out of service, so the missing passengers at bus stop and going like past them. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll pick that up, but just to answer that question, in terms of patronage, uh, obviously you've had a growth in fair paying passengers in the last four years of over 16%. Also, for the first time, actually, passengers went above 150 million um, last time, and it's been quite a long time since we've hit that milestone, actually. So we can pick up the point you raised, but on the general point of passengers, actually the trend in the sub-region is booking many trends in other sub-regions, and it's actually quite, quite healthy for the... Uh, what the alliance has actually achieved. Thank you for that. Okay, I've got Ken, then John, then Gordon, then Helen. Thanks very much, sir. Thanks very much for the excellent report, excellently presented. Uh, one thing which is never mentioned on this, because you've got on page 19, it's on expi, is fair capping. Uh, London subsidy outweighs everything else in the rest of the country. So if we had the London subsidy, I mean, our fares could be capped possibly at about one fare the other fares is. So this is something I think we need to keep on telling the world that we are poorly uh, balanced as far as this government's concerned. Uh, just a comment on the old retire bill. I know Francis, when Mike was on, asked me to raise this a couple of years ago. We did, I raised this in the chamber because they might be sure well to do it. Uh, well, that was that. But of course, on the patronage, we've only got to look back a few years when we introduced the one ticket, my ticket. Now, we did that against the operators because we had to put up, I think, how much was it? About 50, 55, about half a million quid just in case the, the, the numbers didn't go up. As it was, the numbers went up. This is why we are bucking the trend, because we, this authority, as it was an authority, realised the potential was out there, and we done what we're supposed to do, is give our people the best possible chance. Absolutely, can. Some excellent points there. Yep. John. Thanks, Chair. Thanks very much, and uh, thanks for presenting. I just want to commend the, the officers. Uh, both in and outside the room really for the quality of the report here and also the quality of work that's going on to help improve the quality of bus services to the residents we seek to serve. It's an exceptional. Uh, the question I wanted to ask please is uh, you mentioned about Compubus being the third member on the Alliance. I'm just wondering if any of the other operators are considering doing it and if so what's the time scale? Thank you. We had to interest